you know, it was the weirdest thing because when I got this movie, and the movie I got, guys, I can tell you, I can't tell you who's in the movie, none of that shit, but I can tell you because you're going to find out anyway. It's out. I guess there was paparazzi taking pictures, and one of my pictures came out, so people are bothering me. I'm in the Sopranos <laughs> prequel, uh, the Sopranos in 67, The Many Saints of Newark. It's uh, I was very fortunate to get it, and when I got it, I was happy, but then I started thinking about it that I had to be there for three fucking weeks. Plus, I got another movie that I'm going to shoot in June. Thank God it's not at the same time. I thought I had to shoot them both at the same time. But when I got the movie, right away, I was happy for a few days. And then I did what every fucking moron did. I started thinking about it. <laughs> and the more I thought about it, I didn't think I could survive 19 days without my wife and kid. What am I going to do? You know, uh, just a bunch of negative shit comes into your mind when something good happens. And it happens at every fucking level, as you notice. I mean, uh, just negative shit came in. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do well. And thank God for Tom Pop and another one of my friends that I talked that talked me into it. I agreed to do it, and now I'm very happy because it's uh, it was a life-changing experience that I needed right now. I've been getting flat. You ever get flat in your fucking life? Like, you're just flat. You go to work. You, you do what you got to do when you go home. You go to work. You kind of become a machine, and you look for something. But you don't know what it is. You know, when you stop wasting time, now you have all this fucking time to do what you really want to do with your life. And sometimes... You become flat. Yeah, you do a little writing, you do this, you do that, but there's 24 hours in a fucking day. You can't write all day, and you can't do jumping jacks all day, and you can't sit around with your fucking friends all day. You got to make forward progress, which is what I'm always doing, but at the same time, I got to be honest with you, I got a little fucking bored. Like, I just got bored. And this movie came up, and uh, right away, the fears come in. Oh, yeah. And again, I... I when I got on the plane, I was fine. When I landed in New York, you know, I had my anxiety, my little panic fucking shit. I got to the hotel room, and I started doubting myself, blah, 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 blah. But the first night, I had to go to wardrobe. And once I went to wardrobe and I figured out exactly what I was doing, I was fine. Then I walked out of wardrobe. I had a hot dog right down 42nd Street. And then about an hour later, when I got to the hotel, about a block from the hotel, I saw a fucking rat. And I knew I was home. Like, once I saw the <laughs> fucking rat, that was the sign that I'm in the gutter of life. I'm back here where it all started. So I had a few days to go before I shot. I had, like, I got there Monday, and I think I had to shoot Wednesday and Friday the first week. Wednesday and Thursday. Because that Friday, I went to Minneapolis. Thank you for coming to the shows with Dean Delray. And then that Saturday was 420 with Milwaukee. You guys were great. Two sold out shows. Thank you very much. The city of Milwaukee was a great 420. Somebody fucking cosby me with a fucking edible in Milwaukee. I still don't know who it is. And guess what? I don't give a fuck. You did a good job. I got fucked up. But I came uh, the first week. I was just I was just frozen. I didn't know how to act. So that Tuesday, before I did anything, I took a fucking Uber up to 88th Street where I grew up when I came, you know. And... It was just overwhelming to see the block where so much had happened. I mean, this when I moved into this apartment building, I was three quarters retarded. And after I got hit with the head with the lunchbox and I started to experience New York City and what it was about, and I grew into my skin, I, I became like a little man there. Like, I thought about all the things my mom would make me do. Like, I remember with a, I walked up and stood in front of the building and I was going to take a picture and all that shit. But guess what? I When I took this trip, I took it with the thing that I didn't want to do podcasts. I didn't want to do a lot of stand-up comedy. I didn't want to book anything significant like Nyack or A Night in New York. I just wanted to work out. So I did spots in Danger Fields, real light, 10, 12 people a night, just up there riffing, fucking around, just to keep the timing alive. And that, that was it. I didn't want to do people's podcasts. I didn't want to be running around. I just wanted to focus on this movie. I was going to have a lot on my fucking plate. I don't think my agents, that's how I told my agents, don't even talk to me about dates. I don't want to know nothing. All I want to do is focus on that fucking movie. I got a great opportunity. I got to put 100% into it. And I went up to my old neighborhood and I walked around. Then I went to the public school, 166. I crossed the street to the horse place. I never rode a horse there. I was always scared, but I would go in there and steal horseshoes. What? And sell them to other kids and shit for like a dollar, 50 cents, whatever the fuck it was in those days, a quarter. 
Is this the neighborhood of Mr. Martini? Yeah, this okay. is Mr. Martini's neighborhood. I saw Mr. Martini's house. <laughs> it's worth like a half a fucking billion dollars now. It's a redstone. There's probably four kids buried in the backyard in that fucking <laughs> place. Uh, but it was just so weird what I got from standing in front of that building. Like, I remembered my mom would put a huge gold chain on me and make me go out to see if I would protect myself if somebody tried to rob it. Like, there were so many lessons that came to me while I was standing in front of that fucking building. And I just walked around. That was it. I went up to all the way up to, like, 93rd Street. And then I walked down to, like, 79th Street to, like, stand up New York. I looked around there. I saw the Kari Dad. But I didn't want to eat Chinese food because it's got a lot of sodium and you blow up. And you don't want to be on camera fucking blowed it up looking like fucking Johnny Cheech. <laughs> so I said, fuck it. I only ate Chinese food on Easter Sunday. I went to Chan's and I finished up. The first week in New York was rough on the fucking diet. I only worked out one time. And I want to thank Inline Fitness for helping me work out. Adam and my man Jonathan. And I also went to King's Thai Boxing down on 30 fucking 6th Street with my man Jay, the Dominican, and my girl Carmen, the Puerto Rican from the fucking Bronx. They hooked the brother up. I went there a few times to keep in shape and to sweat out all the fucking sodium for the New York food. And once I went up to that fucking neighborhood and walked around, that's why I felt my balls. Like, I was like, okay, this is who the fuck I am again. This is where I came from. And then that night, you know me, I hit Rudy's in Cliffside Park the first night. So I jumped on the motherfucking ferry from uh, the New York Waterworks there and took it into fucking Edgewater, Weehawken. And then my buddy picked me up and went to Rudy's and we hung out. And I told him to take a ride around that fucking neighborhood just to see what that was like anymore. I didn't go down to my mother's house or around that area. I just stayed up lightly in North Bergen. And I went home early that night. And, you know, the first night when you're out of California, you're not going to sleep. You're not going to sleep because of the time change and... So I knew that going in. That would give me a night just to get uh, accustomed to, you know, filming. And I went on the fucking set Wednesday, and it was uh, it was a rough day for me because I hadn't acted in a movie. You know, movie and TV is different. I hadn't acted in a movie in a long time. So the first day was type of, kind of uh, rough for me. I didn't know what was going on, really. But one of the actors, I was watching him. And he's fucking phenomenal. And I just fed off his energy in a way. And then I got into it. And by the second day, I was all the fuck away. And, you know, I had tapped into David Chase's mind. I mean, here's a guy that put a television show on that was the blueprint for Breaking Bad, you know, Sons of Anarchy, King of Thrones, whatever the fuck, Game of Thrones. So he had something to bring to the table. It's really weird when you work somebody of a high caliber, you... You open your eyes. Like, I didn't watch my dailies, but I watched for two minutes. I watched what the cameras look like and shit. And that's when it all came to me of what the fuck I was involved in. Like, I had to go sit down. My blood pressure had gone up. Like, I'm involved in something fucking big. And I'm telling you guys, I don't want it on social media. I'm telling you guys because I don't want you guys to read it somewhere. I'll see that picture they put up of me at Getty. I don't want... I want you to hear it from me. I can't. That's all I can fill you in on. Uh, I'm happy for you guys because you bet on me and I came through for you. You know what I'm saying? So a year from now, when the movie gets released, you know, you're part of it because uh, we've been doing this podcast. And like I've said since day one, this podcast, you guys are my psychiatry because you keep me in fucking check. You keep me working out. You keep me looking at things. You keep me trying to be sharper. I take 16 months in between dates and cities. So when I go back, it's a new experience for you guys. You know what I'm saying? But back to what happened in New York. You know, when I was walking around, it all came back to me. You know, where I had come from. I have a rule. You know, I like to travel for three days, especially when it comes to New York. Because when I'm in New York longer than three days, it takes me a few days to unwind. Like, it takes me a little longer because it takes me back that far back. Like, it takes me into Coco, you know, when I was robbing and doing bad things. So after a few days, I go, my mind goes to places it shouldn't fucking go. But in the same thought, here I am on a movie set. And I thought about the stretch I had made. And I thought about the things I had done along the way to get, like I was back there in 93 grinding it out, guys. I was a fucking open micer wishing I could get an audition, you know, and I took a comedy class and I fucking 
worked at the old New York Comedy Club. And was I doing it right or what? It doesn't matter. I was in the struggle. I was there. I still remember paying, you know, forty dollars to park to audition for an improv troupe at the Copacabana that I had knew nothing about. I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. When I walked in there, I still think today that those people remember who I am and they're <laughs> laughing at me behind my back because I went in there and I didn't belong there. But that's not the here and now. What was weird is that I saw my struggle back there as something meaningful. It wasn't a waste. Those nine months I put into New York weren't a waste because here I was 20-something years later in a major film. And that's a great fucking feeling. So even though... I was thinking about robbing the hammer call across the street from the high school. And, you know, when I went down side streets, I thought about the people I robbed on that block or the time I crawled into this window or whatever. I looked at the bar where I used to borrow money from the loan shark and never pay him back. And, you know, I looked at all these things and it just reflected of where the move I had made in my life and how proud I should be. But I don't, I'm not. I'm not because I was such a piece of shit that I'm just trying to get back now to just being normal. Like, I just want to be a regular fucking guy. I don't want to do nothing. I just want to live my life regular. I want to be a good dad and a good husband and go out that way. As long as I go out that way, I'm very fucking happy. If it's 2 in the afternoon and you ain't high, go fuck yourself. Get out of my face. I want you around me like I want cancer in my ball sack. You know what I'm saying? You're going to come around here looking at me with your fucking white eyes, thinking that, you know, I'm going re to reform. Go fuck yourself. My morning starts at 5.30 a.m. Either you're there or you're square. You know what I'm saying?